281 in your hymnal, or you can look in your uh, bulletin. It's uh, written out there. 281. We have heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Let's all stand together. 281. Let's sing that verse together. We have heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Spread the tidings all around. Welcome to our annual Turkey Dinner Sunday, and uh, glad you've come to be part of this, and uh, appreciate it so much, and uh, we're looking forward to a great day together, all right? I'm sure we'll have some late arrivals coming in, and uh, that's fine. We'll make room for them as they show up, but thank you for being here and being on time, and uh, we're going to have just a good service together, and then we got some real good food for you to eat outside, all right? And uh, Lord bless us with a beautiful day. And uh, I am glad it's today and it wasn't Thursday or Friday. And uh, when the wind was blowing 180 miles an hour and, uh, or something like that anyway. And uh, it was great, great, beautiful day today. Thanks for taking the time and being here with us this morning, all right? Let's open with a word of prayer, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you for another Lord's Day that you've given to us. And thank you, Lord, especially for this uh, Turkey Dinner Sunday. Thank you for these guests who've come to be with us this morning. And Lord, we bow here at the beginning of our service and we ask you to meet with us today. We do want to thank you for our many blessings that you give to us. And we are certainly a, a blessed people and we are grateful uh, to you for every good and every perfect gift that comes from above. And Lord, we thank you for your goodness to us. And we ask you to meet with us now today during this service. I pray that, Lord, each of us, our hearts would be open to what you would want to say to us this morning. May you be pleased with the service today, and may Christ be exalted. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Okay, you may be seated.
Amen. Well, let's go over to 311. Redeemed how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. You may remain seated. 311. We're going to sing that first, third, and last together. Redeemed how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Welcome all of you here today. Got a few announcements for us. If you listen carefully now uh, to these, it'll help to everything to go smooth. Uh, this morning, we um, right after the service, right at the end of our service, we will pass out tickets for the meal. All right, and uh, you'll have two tickets. All right, they'll be connected together. You just keep either one of those. They have the same number on them. You're going to give one when you go out to the line. You'll give. There'll be somebody there to collect your ticket, and you'll give that ticket to them and you'll keep one for yourself okay there'll be two tickets you fold it in half tear them apart keep one give one okay and then a little bit at the end of the meal towards the end of the meal we'll have a drawing we have 10 frozen turkeys we want to give away and uh, we'll pull those tickets and uh, we'll call out your number and maybe you'll get your number and you'll take yourself home a Thanksgiving turkey all right and uh, so that'll be the end of the service now if you have children here you'll get enough tickets for you and your children Okay, because when we dismiss, you'll be able to pick your children up at the children's churches uh, that are going on right now, and then you'll be able to go in line with them, and you'll have enough tickets for everybody. Okay, we won't give the children's tickets in their children's churches. You'll get the ticket in here for your children. Okay, and uh, that's how that'll work. Now, also, I hope you understand, we, we can't do carry out. We can't do take homes. Okay, don't say, oh... I have a friend who wanted to come, but they got sick, and can I take them a plate? And, yeah, boy, if we start doing that, we really get into a problem, all right? So just uh, help us with that, if you would. And uh, you're here. You, you get to eat and uh, enjoy it. Got a lot of good food there, but uh, we can't do a carry-out or take-home, okay? I hope you understand about that, and thank you for helping us with that, okay? So uh, don't leave. If you go into the line... And you try to get a meal and you don't have a ticket, then you got to come You have a personal meeting with me. Okay? And nobody wants that. So, uh, all right? And because uh, <laughs> then you don't get to eat. you got to listen to another sermon, all right? So uh, you don't want to go through that. So make sure you get your ticket at the end of the service, all right? And uh, so glad you've come to be with us uh, today. And uh, we want to take a moment and welcome our visitors that are with us uh, here this morning. And uh, Brother Lindemann, if you'd give these guys a hand, we'd appreciate that. And uh, we, we're going to find out who you are and where you're from and uh, welcome you this morning. All right. We're going to go by section. So we'll start in this section right over here uh, to my right, your left. If you're visiting today, I just want you to stand for a moment, if you would, please. I just want to meet you, find out who you are and where you're from. Wonderful. Great. Okay. All right. All right. Here, let's start with these gentlemen right here. Yes, sir. Wonderful. Brother Wasser, good to have you today. Thank you for being here. Next to you. 
Great, Gary, good to have you this morning. Great, thank you. And the ladies. Okay, Sharon, thank you. All right, great, good. Well, you might, you might get the award for coming the furthest this morning, all right? And uh, wonderful, thank you. Okay, back here. Okay, Barbara, thank you. Good, Robert, good to have you this morning. Thank you, Grove City man. Good, good. Okay, and then back here. Yes, ma'am. Okay, Alicia, good to have you this morning. Judy, thank you. All right. Good, thank you. Thank you for being here. Great. Gary, good to have you this morning. Thank you. That's great. Okay, back here. Yes, sir. Danny, good to have you. Good. Tanya, good to see you. Thank you. Good to have you today. Great. And who's the one on the end? Yes, yes, ma'am. Angel. Good. All right. Good to know we have an angel among us. All right. <laughs> Very good. All right. Let's come to the middle. Now, if you're in the middle, you stand up for us. Oh, we got one more. Who did I miss back here? Did I miss? I miss you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Tell us who you are. I'm sorry. Monday? All right. Thank you, my friend. Thank you for being here. Great. All right. Now let's come to the middle. All right. Yes, sir. Good, good. Well, thanks for coming this morning. That's great. Okay. And right down here? Okay. Wow. Okay. All right, great. Well, thanks for coming this morning. Delighted you're here. Praise the Lord. That's great. All right. Uh, let's see. Orville. Good to see you, brother. Thanks for being here again. All right. He's our, he's our faithful man every year. He's here. Good to see you again, man. I'm so glad when I heard you were coming. That's great. Uh, who's going to? Yes, ma'am. Judith, good to have you this morning. And beside you, number one. All right. Congratulations. Very good. That's great. All right. Congratulations to you. That's great. Okay. Yes, sir. Jean, good to have you from New York City. Great. What time do you leave this morning to get here? <laughs> All right. Yes, ma'am. All right. Good. Good. Yes, ma'am. Great. Thank you for being here today. Good to see you. All right. Right here in the end. Yes, ma'am. From Grove City. Good. Thank you. And right right here. Hmm? March. Good to have you this morning. Tim, thanks for coming today. That's great. All right. And then. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. All right, Daisy, we remember you in prayer. All right. Well, thank you for coming this morning. We're glad you're here. Thank you. Amen. You're welcome. God bless you. Yes, sir. Right here. Good to see you, Alex. Thank you. To Shane? Yes. Good to have you. Touche to Shane. There you go. All right. All right. Yeah. Oh, great. Good to see both of you today. That's great. Oh, good. Well, wonderful. Great. Thanks for coming to church this morning. That's great. Thank you so much. Oh, that's great. Okay, now we'll come over here on this side, right here. All right, if you're visiting, stand up. We'll meet you. Okay, got a good group over here. Right on the front row, who is this? I'm Paula. Good, Paula. And who's with you, Paula? My sister lives with me. Okay, all right. 
All right. Well, good to have your sister with us, too, okay? Yes, sir. From Canton, Ohio. Is that right? Good. My old stomping grounds. All right. Uh, let's go to the third row. Yes, sir. All right, James, good to have you this morning. Yes, sir. Brandon, good to have you this morning. Yes, ma'am. Your door, Dayton, great. Thanks for coming. Wonderful. All right, back here. Yes, sir. Great to meet you, Daryl. Thank you for being here. All right, let's go uh, to the aisle right here. Yes, sir. Good, good to have you this morning. Peyton Manning. Good, Matthew, thanks for coming. Great, thank you for being here. June, good to have you today. Thank you for being here. Yes, ma'am. Okay, great, thanks for being here. That's wonderful, appreciate it. Thank you so much. And in the very back row. Good to have you, Jeremiah. Good to see you. Amen. Good. Be careful you hang around, Jeremiah. All right. <laughs> All right, does that cover everybody? Now, if you, if you got the connection card there, it's just uh, we want to have a record of your visit with us today on our special Turkey Day Sunday. And if you'll take just a minute and fill that card out for us, we'd appreciate it. In a little bit, we have an offering for us to give, our normal weekly giving. And uh, you're not here to give anything. We're not asking anything from you. All we want you to do is put that card in the plate when it goes by. And uh, keep the pen as our gift to you for coming. Uh, we're glad you're here today, all right? Let's give them all a warm welcome, shall we? Yeah. 
singing this morning. Let's go back to the beginning of the book. Number three, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Let's all stand once you find that. Number three together, amazing grace. On that first, amazing grace, how one another. Make somebody feel welcome, especially our guests. We'll come back and sing their last stanzas together. find our seats and as we do let's sing that last together when we've been there ten thousand years bright shining as the sun let's find our seats on that last together when we've been there ten thousand years bright shining as the sun Let's all sing that first one more time. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. We're going to have the instruments just uh, uh, stay silent as we sing this a cappella. Lift it up to the Lord, all right? Amazing grace, how sweet the
Be seated now, if you will, please. Fellas, you may want to grab some of those chairs downstairs and, and be ready to add that row in back there if you need them, all right? All right, the ushers are coming, and they're going to receive our offering today. That's for those of us who come here regularly, and uh, we're going to give as we normally do. And uh, those of you visiting today, we're not asking anything from you. We, you're our guest today. We just ask if you filled the card out, you put that in the plate. Uh, with us and um, we'll have a record of your visit this morning and again we thank you for being here we're going to pray we'll ask God's blessing on the offering this morning and I'll ask Brother Wallace to lead us in our prayer Father we do certainly thank you for this opportunity of Lord uh, being able to uh, have our guests in our in your house this morning and, and Father we uh, now come to the point of the service of where your word is opened and, Lord, the gospel is preached. Father, I just pray that the Holy Spirit will be working heavily upon our crowd today. Lord, if there's some here that are not saved and does not know that they go to heaven when they take their last breath, they can know that. The Bible says so. Lord, your word is precious. So, Father, help us to have a good day in your house. And, Father, may, uh, may we have a sweet spirit while the word is taught. Lord, we'll give you all the thanks for it. Bless the offering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. have your Bible with you this morning, we want to have our scripture reading today from Luke chapter 7, if you would please, Luke chapter 7, and can I remind you that if you would please silence your cell phone or turn it off, uh, some of you may not used to be being in church at this time and uh, someone may just call you and uh, that would be embarrassing for you and interruptive to the service and so if you would silence that, that we'd appreciate that and uh, that'll help us all. Luke 7, please. Luke chapter 7 for our scripture reading. This is, we're going to be verses 36 through 50, and we read these verses responsibly. We, uh, I be, we begin together on verse number 36, then we, I read verse 37, and together on 38, we'll alternate like that until we end on verse number 50 of Luke chapter 7. If you don't have a Bible and you're close to somebody you could share with, that'd be great. Uh, but listen carefully, there's a story that's told here, and I want you to get the story, all right? So as, our us as we usually do here, we stand together to read the scripture. So if you wouldn't mind standing with us as we read God's word. And we begin on verse 36 
of Luke chapter 7. Ready? And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisees which had bidden him saw it, he said within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he saith, Master, say on. And there was a certain creditor, which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence, and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave the most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she hath washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much, but little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he saith to the woman, Thy faith has saved thee, go in peace. Let's pray together, shall we? Father, add your blessing to the reading of the scripture this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the Bible. Thank you, God, that you have given us your words and you have desired to communicate your truth to us. And I pray, Lord, that you would prepare our hearts, that we be ready to receive your word today. I would pray, Lord, you'd help each of us to focus and to concentrate and not miss what you would want to say to each one of our hearts this morning. Thank you, Lord, again for each one that's come. I pray your blessing on the special as it's sung now in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I was drifting away on life's petty less sea, and the angry waves threatened my ruin to be when away at my side. There I dimly descried a stately old vessel, and loudly I cried, Ship ahoy, ship ahoy, and loudly I cried, ship ahoy. T'was the old ship of Zion, the sailing along, all aboard her seemed joyous, I heard their sweet song, and the captain's kind ear, ever ready to hear, caught my wail of distress, and I cried out in fear, ship ahoy! Ahoy, as I cried out and fear, ship ahoy. The 
good captain commanded a boat to be lowered, and with tender compassion he took me on board. And I'm happy today, all my sins washed away in the blood of my Savior, and now I can say, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, from my soul. down he sends merciless waves the strong arm of our captain he's mighty to save then trust him today no longer delay board that old ship of zion and shout on your Jesus says, Jesus says, shout and sing on your way, Jesus saves. Heavenly Father, we thank you now for this morning and again the other opportunity for us to gather together and to open up your word. And Father, I asking for your help as we bring the truth and the message this morning. I ask you to help the people as they listen this morning. Lord, I pray that each of us would give our attention to the only book you've ever written. And I pray that each of us would listen carefully to what you might want to say to us this morning. Lord, I pray that the way to heaven would be made clear and plain. And that folks today, as this woman did in our story that we read, would hear four words that could change their life forever. May your will be done now in our midst. And may you be pleased with what's said here in these next few moments. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Now, let me put your minds at ease this morning, all right? I'm not a, I'm not a long-winded preacher, okay? I like to eat turkey too, okay? That's pretty obvious probably. And um, so I will not keep you long today, but I would ask for the, for the next 20 minutes or so that I have your attention and I'm going to share some very, very important news with you today. As I mentioned, I'm going to talk to you about four words that can change your life forever. Four words that can change your life forever. Can four words really change your life? Well, think about it. How about, how about, I'm sorry, it's cancer. How about, yes, you are pregnant. Four words can change your life. How about you owe 5000 How about please take a number? Maybe it's just as simple as the baby needs changed. Or how about you are being audited? Four words can change your life. Jesus changes lives. And here in this passage that we read this morning, a lady had her life changed by hearing four words from Jesus. They're in verse number 36. Back in Luke chapter 7. I'm sorry, I think it's verse number 48. I'm sorry, verse 48 of Luke 7. He said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. Thy sins are forgiven. I was reading about a woman, and this is supposed to be a true story, who was on an overseas flight and about halfway into that flight, she started experiencing chest pain. And she called the attendant over and said, I think I might be having a heart attack. And so the flight attendant got on the intercom and said, is, 
when there happened to be a doctor on board. And when she no sooner made that announcement than 67 people stood up. And she said, wow, is any of you a heart doctor? And all 67 remained standing. They were all going to a convention of heart doctors. Cardiac surgeons. Imagine the joy of that woman who's having the chest pains when she realized who's on the plane with her. They're able to effectively diagnose her problem, prescribe the, direct, the, the correct treatment. They'd have the knowledge, the expertise, and desire to want to help her with her need. And I want to tell you this morning that we have someone here today that's able and willing to help you with your need. He can die. He's already diagnosed you. He already understands what your problem is. He's already under, he already has prescribed what the cure will be to take care of your problem. And He's more than willing to help. He's more than willing to take care of you and to see you made whole. Now, in the story we read this morning, I want you to think about uh, who you are. And, and to recap just quickly with you, Jesus goes to the home of someone who's called a Pharisee, which was a really strict religious sect, and he's having a dinner there. Only the, the wealthy people would have dinners, and uh, usually every wealthy home had like a courtyard, and they would allow people there, and, and, and conversation would go on, and other people would stand around that courtyard and eavesdrop, get to listen in on the conversation. And this fellow had Jesus there, and of course a crowd had come, and he, in the course of the conversation and in the dinner, a woman comes in. And she takes a, some precious ointment, perfume if you will almost, something that they would use to make themselves smell good. And she gets on her hands and knees and she's weeping and with her tears and that ointment, she anoints his feet and begins to wipe them with the hairs of her head. Now, it was customary in that day, when you'd come to someone's house, they would have a servant there with a basin of water and a towel, and you would, he would wash your feet for you. At every home, that was just courtesy, because there weren't paved roads. You, didn't, you had to walk through dusty streets and sandals, and your feet would be dirty, and they would wash your feet. And so they had no servant there, so this woman did this for Jesus. And, and the Pharisee, the real religious guy, he thinks to himself, well, if this Jesus is who he says he is, he'd know what kind of woman's touching him. Because he makes this statement, she is a sinner, four words again. She is a sinner. And, and, and here she is, anointing his feet, and Jesus is going to teach him something. And, and he's talking how she does this for my burial. She knows what I've come to do. I've come to die for the sins of mankind. And he's teaching this Pharisee a lesson. But I want to ask you something. Who are you in the story? Are you the woman? Are you the woman that comes in that everybody knows is a sinner? Who are you? Are you this woman who knew that she was a second class citizen, so to speak? She wouldn't have been invited to this banquet. In fact, she would never have been accepted at the banquet. Jewish rabbis didn't even speak to women at all in public. That was forbidden. And so a woman of this type never would have been invited. And her, her sins aren't named, but she obviously had a reputation. Everybody knew what she was. She would have been in the, I was going to say the red light district. I guess it would be the red torch district in those days. You had no lights. But she knew there was a need in her life. She knew she was a sinner. She didn't have a problem with that. She knew that she had lived a life and done things that God would not be pleased with. And she was convicted about her sin. She was not feeling good about her sin. And she approached Jesus in spite of all those strikes against her. And she took something that probably was very valuable to her. Some nice ointment, some perfume that would probably make her smell good to others. 
in the profession that she would do. And so she, in total humility, kneels down to Jesus' feet, weeping and crying, wiping His feet with the hairs of her head and anointing Him with that oil. Are you the woman? Are you the Pharisee? Are you Simon? Are you the host of this banquet? The wealthy Pharisee? He too was a sinner in a great need. But he didn't see himself as a sinner. He could see everybody else's sins, but he wouldn't see his own sins. You see, it was real. His, his problem was blindness. What blindness? No, spiritual blindness. He could point out everyone else's sins, but he couldn't see his own. It was easy for him to say, she is a sinner, but not possible for him to say, I'm a sinner. Look this way. She'll find her seat by herself. Impossible for him to say, I'm a sinner. Are you that Pharisee? Easy to see other people? He was considered, he had a, he had a banquet for people, but he was self-righteous. He considered himself better than other people. He certainly considered himself better than that woman who came in to anoint Jesus' feet. And he sensed no need for forgiveness in his life. Good moral person. Good in religion. Good in outward behavior. You would have thought he was a fine, upstanding guy. But the Bible says there's many good, upstanding people that are on their way to hell. That will not make it to heaven. Because they realize, they do not, they do not realize, you cannot get to heaven by being good. Only by being saved. Now which person are you? Everybody, hey, everybody's in one category or the other this morning. You're either the woman and you see yourself as a sinner or you're the Pharisee and you don't think you're that big of a sinner and saved. What do I need to get saved for? What's that all about? See, you're in one of those two categories. It doesn't matter the amount of sin in your life. That's what Jesus meant when He gave the little parable when he said in verse 41, there's two creditors, which had two, the two, certain creditor had two debtors. One owed him 500 pence and the other 50. Somebody owed him 500 bucks, someone else owed him 50. He said, when neither one could pay, he said, he forgave them both. Then he said, now which one do you think is going to love him the most? And of course, the fellow rightfully said, the one he forgave the most. They both, listen, did they both Owe a debt? Yes. Now one owed 500, one owed 50. It might have been, it could have been, it doesn't matter. If you don't have any money, it doesn't matter if your debt's $5 or if the debt's $50 million. You can't pay either one. And if you don't have the money to pay and you can't pay, you need help. And so he forgives them both. And listen, it's easy to look at someone else and say, well, I'm not a, I don't have as much sin as they do. The fact that's not the issue. The issue is we all have sin. We all have sin in the sight of God. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Everybody in this room, including the guy you're listening to, is a sinner. We all have sinned. There's none righteous, no, not one, the Bible says. In fact, you have to ask yourself the question, how many sins... Does a person have to commit to be a sinner? Just one. Just one. Anybody go? Anybody go all week and didn't commit one sin all week long? I'll give you a minute. No. We all sin. All of us do things we know that God says we shouldn't do. All of us are spiritually bankrupt. When it comes to having to pay our sin debt that we owe to God. 
We all are guilty before Him. Everybody in this room has done things that God says we ought not to do. Or we have not done some things that God says we ought to do. But all of us have come short. All of us are sinners in the sight of God. What an incredible moment it must have been for this woman. As she weeps and she hears the criticism from other people, she hears the criticism of the Pharisee Simon, but then she hears the words of Jesus. Thy sins are forgiven. Wow. How wonderful that must have been for her to hear that. Can you say that this morning? Thy sins are forgiven. Say that with me. Thy sins are forgiven. Can you say that today? Can you say that with the Lord today? I just want to look at that, those four simple words this morning. Let's look at the first word, thy. T-H-Y, pronoun of the second person. In other words, he's simply saying, I'm talking to you. I'm not just saying a general statement. I'm talking to you individually. I'm talking to you personally. It's not an impersonal, flippant comment. Hey, he's not talking about somebody else's sins. He's talking about your sins. Quit worrying about everybody. Listen, don't worry about anybody else's sins. Be concerned about your own sins. And what God wants to do with you. Jesus today, listen, don't listen to the message this morning and say, man, I'm glad so-and-so is here to hear this. I'm glad they're sitting here hearing this. No, no, no. Say, Lord, I'm glad I'm here to hear this. And I need to hear it. Thy, Jesus is addressing you today. You're here today not by accident. You're here today by divine appointment. We have no idea passing out the flyers. How many of you, let's see, I think I got one here. How many of you got one of these? Let me see your hand. Put your hand up high in the air. You got one of the flyers, okay? We passed out almost 20,000 of these throughout Grove City and Columbus. Okay? And, and yet, you're here. You think that's an accident? That's not an accident. You're here by divine appointment. God, God had a message He wanted you to hear. And He wants you to not miss it this morning. Amen. Thy, the second word is sins. Sins. It means, it literally means to miss the mark. It means to err. It means you've wronged somebody. It means uh, anything you've done that God says we shouldn't do. It means whether it's in word or in actions. It's, you, you've broken the commandment. You've broken the, the, the commands of God. And the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've covered that. There's nobody here that's not a sinner. We're all in the same boat. Thy sins, thy sins, a little boy, <laughs> a little boy had just gotten saved, asked Jesus to be his Savior, and he sat on a park bench next to an old man who looked pretty upset. So a little boy, as only little boys can do, looked up at the old man and he said, Sir, do you need to get saved? And the man was a little startled and he said to the little boy, he said, I'll have you know, I've been a deacon in this church for 30 years. Chairman of the deacons for 15 years. Well, the little boy just looked up at him and said, Sir, it don't matter what you've done, Jesus will still save you. <laughs> he can forgive all your sins, amen, even if you're chairman of the deacon board. Thy sins are, are, that's a, that's a simple verb, and, it, and it's simply a verb that means right now at this present time, are. Now, fill in the blank. Don't do it out loud. Just in your mind, just fill in the blank. Thy, or my sins are, what would you put in that blank? Obvious. My sins are hidden. My sins are fun. My sins are weighing me down. My sins are disturbing to me. My sins are destroying me. My sins are destroying others. My sins are keeping me up at night. How would you fill in that blank? 
James Garfield, you may remember that name, he was a lay preacher and a principal at his denominational college. They say he was ambidextrous. He could, this is incredible, he could simultaneously write Greek with one hand and Latin with the other. In 1880, he was elected president of the United States. But after only six months in office, he was shot in the back with a revolver. The amazing thing is, he never lost consciousness. At the hospital, the doctor probed the wound with his little finger to seek the bullet, but to no avail. Today, we know that the bullet went through his vertebrae, lodged between his spleen and his pancreas. But the doctor couldn't find it. So he tried a silver-tipped probe. But he still couldn't locate the bullet. Garfield's body simply wouldn't give it up. So they took Garfield back to Washington, D.C. And despite the summer heat, they tried to keep him comfortable. But he was growing very weak. Teams of doctors came in trying to locate the bullet, probing the wound over and over and over again. In desperation, they asked Alexander Graham Bell to come. He was working on a little device at that time called the telephone. And they asked him to come to see if he could locate the metal inside the president's body. He came and he tried, but he too failed. The president hung on through July, through August, but in September, he finally died. Not from the bullet wound, but from infection. The repeated probing, which the physicians thought would help the man, killed the man. That's how it is. Listen, that's exactly what will happen for people who dwell too long on your sin. And you don't let Christ take care of your sin. You probe it too long. You play with it too long. You think you can overcome it. You think you can handle it. You think you can take care of it. You think you can get victory over it. You think you can... And then you die. And you never went to the one who can say, thy sins are forgiven. Sin. Forgiven. Forgiven. The fourth word. What a word. Forgiven means you've been pardoned. Forgiven means your sins have been canceled out. Forgiven means that you've been loosed, you've been set free. That you've been released from the chains of your sin. You've been been released from the slavery of sin to be allowed to be a servant of God. Free. Forgiven. To be forgiven of your sins means that now you can have a relationship with God. The Bible says there's one thing that separates us from God. And it's our sins. God is light, the Bible says, and in Him is no darkness at all. There's no sin in God at all. What separates us from God is our sin. And so we have to figure out, what am I going to do with these sins? Well, here's the good news, my friend. Jesus Christ came to earth. And and He's the only one that ever lived a perfect, sinless life. The Bible says in the time here on earth, Jesus was tempted in all points like we are, yet without sin. He never committed a single sin. And yet He went to the cross, and He hung there, and He bled and He died. It wasn't for His sins, He didn't have any. Whose sins was Jesus dying for? Our sins. He was dying for my sins. He was dying for your sins. The songwriter put it this way. The songwriter wrote, I should have been crucified. I should have suffered and died. I should have hung on a cross in disgrace. But Jesus, God's Son, took my place. See, Christ died for you. He died in your place when He died on that cross. He took every sin that I've ever committed and sins I haven't committed yet, but He knows I will. He took all my sin and He laid them on Himself and He said, God in heaven, punish me and not stay in slave off. And He took your sin the same way and He said, God, punish me and not put your name there. My friend, believing Jesus died for the sins of the whole world doesn't save you. 
believing Jesus Christ died for your sins. When I say I believe Jesus died for my sins, then I can be saved. You have to believe He died for your sins. That, that, that He took your place on the cross. Don't just believe a fact of history that He died for the sins of the world. What are you about your sins? What are you going to do with your sins? He died for you. He took your place. He was your substitute when He died on the cross. So our sin penalty for sin could be paid for. And now there exists the possibility of a relationship with God. One pastor finished his message one Sunday. He wanted to check in, on his congregation to see if they understood what he said. You know, sometimes what you say isn't what people hear. Just, just sometimes, if... If you ever teach a class or you ever preach a sermon, sometimes you just ought to ask somebody, what was the message about? You'd be surprised what you'll hear. But he asked, can anybody in the congregation, he said, can anybody here tell me what you have to do before you can obtain forgiveness of sin? And one little boy raised his hand. He thought, well, this is good. Even a child understands it. And he looked down and he said, yes. And the little boy said, I guess you got to sin. He's right. What do you got to do before you can get forgiveness of sin? I guess you got to sin. Well, all of us already established the fact we qualify. We sinned. Then you qualify forgiveness of sin because of the death of Jesus Christ. And I want you to think about something this morning. Go back to that woman on the airplane where the 67 cardiac surgeons stood up to offer their help. What if she, what if she said, well, that's nice they're all here, but I don't need their help. What if she said, I'll be okay? What if she said, no, 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 I, I think I know what to do. I think, I think I'll, I'll be able to deal with this. Or maybe she said, you know what, I, I appreciate your advice, I appreciate what you're telling me, but I'll just take care of this later. Hmm? I mean, I don't think a heart attack's really that bad, is it? Hmm? I don't think it's that serious. No, she has to accept their help. She has to accept their advice. She has to surrender herself to their knowledge and experience. She has to humble herself to admit, I need help. I need help. So she had to trust what they would say. In 1830, George Wilson was arrested for mail theft and he was sentenced to execution by hanging. President Andrew Jackson at the time issued him a pardon, but he refused to accept it. So the question was, should Wilson be freed or should he be hanged? Chief Justice John Marshall issued this decision from the Supreme Court. A pardon is a slip of paper, the value of which is determined by the acceptance of the person being pardoned. If it's refused, it's no pardon. George Wilson must be hanged. My friend, the pardon is offered to you by Jesus Christ. He died for your sins. He was buried. The Bible says three days later, God raised him from the dead. God was saying, I'm accepting my son's payment for the sin of mankind. And my friend, the pardon is available for you. But you too must accept his pardon for your sins. You too must accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. You must say, I believe, Jesus, you died for my sins. You were buried. You rose again. And listen, the Bible says if you'll call on the name of the Lord Jesus and you ask Him to be your Savior, He pardons you. He gives you the gift of eternal life. And the Bible says you shall be saved. It doesn't say you might be saved. It doesn't say you may be saved. It doesn't say you can hope to be saved. It says, you shall be saved. That's a guarantee, not from me, but from God. But you have to accept the pardon, or it's no good. It's no good. It is not a pardon. The woman had to accept that Jesus had forgiven her sins, set her free so she could go in peace. Simon, the Pharisee, he could have the same forgiveness if he would ask for it. 
if he would humble himself. You see, it all, it all comes down to this. There are those in this room this morning, you, you're, the, you're the woman. You know you're a sinner. You know you need a Savior. You've just heard this morning that the Savior you need is Jesus Christ. And He's able and willing to save you. You simply have to call and ask Him. There's others of you today, you're Simon. You're the Pharisee. <laughs> Preacher preaching to me about being saved. What's he talking about? I need to be saved. I don't need that stuff. You're the Pharisee. You won't admit that you need help. You won't admit. You, you, you still want to trust what you do instead of what Jesus has done. The problem you got is, what about your sins? What about your sins? When you stand before God, they're still going to be with you. Unless you receive Christ. Because when you receive Christ as your Savior, and you say, I'm going to trust what you've done for me, Jesus, to give me that gift of eternal life, Jesus says, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. That's the, that's the four words that will change your life. Have you ever heard those words from Jesus? Have you ever called on the Lord Jesus from your heart and told Him, I know I'm a sinner. I know that I should die for my sins and pay for them in hell. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross for me. You paid my sin debt and I will trust you as my Savior. Give me the gift of eternal life and take me to heaven one day. If you've ever done that, you've heard Jesus say to you, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. That's the only way you go to heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. The Bible says there's no other name given under heaven, given among men, whereby we must be saved. Jesus is the only one. He's the only one who died for your sins. You have to call upon Him. And if you'll call upon Him and trust what He's done, not what you do. I'm going to heaven this morning, not because I'm in a Baptist church. Not because I'm a pastor. Not because I grew up in a church. I grew up in going to church with a family that, 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 that took me to church. I'm going to heaven this morning because Jesus Christ died for me. And I, by faith, have asked Him to be my Savior. That's what the Bible says to do. That's not the Baptist way to heaven. That's not the Methodist way to heaven. That's not the Catholic way to heaven. That's not the Presbyterian way to heaven. That's the Bible way to heaven. If you're going to go to heaven, that's the way you go. And once you receive Christ as your Savior, the Bible says, whoever believes on me, Jesus said, should not be ashamed. Anybody, anybody married in here this morning? Any married people here today? Okay. One fellow, you didn't raise your hand. You just said you were married five years. There you go. All right. I'm just going to talk about you, James. He said he, five years, and you know what? He's not ashamed of it. He just announced it to all of us. See? Once you receive Christ your Savior, you shouldn't be ashamed of it. You should be willing to publicly let people know that Christ is your Savior. One of the ways you do that is you, you follow the Lord in what, we, what is called in the Bible believer's baptism. Baptism doesn't save anybody. Baptism is like a wedding ring. When you see me with a wedding ring on, what's that tell you about me? It tells you I'm married. It tells you I made a commitment to somebody. That's what baptism is. When someone sees you get baptized, they see that you have trusted in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That you've trusted Jesus as your Savior. And that they publicly know what... Nobody can see your heart. But baptism allows people to see what you've done in your heart. That you've trusted Jesus as your Savior. That you're dying to an old life and you're rising to walk in a new life with Jesus. And once you receive Jesus as your Savior, the next step you ought to take is you ought to be baptized. That's just a step of obedience. What would you think of someone who gets married and, and the wife puts a ring on his finger and they go out to go on their honeymoon and she looks down and he doesn't have his ring on? You say, what's, what's the problem? You don't want anybody to know you're married? You don't want anybody to know you belong to somebody? Uh, some wives would have an issue with that. Husbands would have an issue with that if their wife didn't want to wear a ring. You say, what's the matter? You don't want anybody to know you belong to me? You don't even know you made a commitment to me? 
Well, Jesus says you make a commitment to Jesus Christ, and then you show that publicly by baptism. And I want to give you an opportunity this morning. If you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, to trust Him as your Savior today. Hey, i got good news for you. He's here. He promised when we gather together, He'll be here. And I want to give you that opportunity. Let's bow for prayer. Shall we? Every head bowed and every eye closed. Just between you and God right now. If you're here this morning and you have never called on the Lord Jesus, and from your heart, ask Him to be your Savior, to forgive your sin, to give you the gift of eternal life, I'd like to help you to call upon the Lord. Now, I'm going to help you with a prayer. If all you do is just repeat words that you hear me say, then we can scrape your prayer off the ceiling in a little bit. It won't mean a thing. The Bible says God's looking at your heart this morning. And so I'll help you with words, but you must mean them from your heart. But you could pray something like this. Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of my sins. And I now trust you, Jesus, and you alone as my Savior. Thank you for dying for my sins. Please give me the gift of eternal life. And help me to live for you. Now with our heads bowed and our eyes closed, I'm going to finish praying in just a moment. But I wonder how many folks this morning would say, Pastor, with their heads bowed and eyes closed, just between you and God, would say, Pastor, from my heart, I prayed and I asked Jesus to forgive my sin and be my Savior this morning. Would you slip your hand up and hold it for a minute that I could see it? Would you do that today? There's one, there's two. There's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Anybody else this morning? You may put them down. Anybody else say, Pastor, I prayed and asked Christ to be my Savior this morning. You would join these others that lifted their hand. Was that you this morning? Was that you? God bless you, ladies. Thank you. God bless you. I see them. Now I'm going to pray in just a moment. And then we're going to have an invitation. That's an opportunity for those of you who prayed and asked Christ to be your Savior. Here's all you have to do. We'll stand to our feet. The pianist will play. Bob is going to sing. All you have to do is slip from your seat. Someone will let you out. I'll meet, I'll meet me here at the front. I'll be at this aisle. Uh, Brother Bob will be over here at this aisle. And you meet us and just say, I accepted Jesus as my Savior today. And let us rejoice in that decision. Don't be ashamed of it. Now's the opportunity for you to publicly tell us that you accepted Jesus. You won't have to say anything else. We'll have you have a seat. We'll, I'll, I'll tell the folks that you've received Jesus as your Savior. Then you ought to follow him in baptism this morning. We have everything you need to be obedient to him in baptism. But I want you to obey him this morning. Do what God's telling you to do in your heart. He's already spoken to you. Now you respond to him. Heavenly Father, thank you for speaking to hearts this morning. Thank you, Lord, for these who lifted their hands and said that they received Christ as their Savior. And Father, I pray that you would help them now to respond to you. And Lord, they would come and shake our hand and say, I have received Jesus Christ as my Savior today. And Lord, may they never forget November 15, 2015, when they heard Jesus say, Thy sins are forgiven. Their name was written down in heaven. They received the gift of eternal life. Lord, I pray each one now will do what you're telling them to do in their heart. Have your way now, please, in each life. And I'll thank you for it. With your heads bowed, you stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, our pianist will play. As she plays, Bob's going to sing. I'm right here. You respond. Will you stand to your feet? And if you prayed, you slipped your hand up, you come see me right now. Will you please? That's right. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after.
after thy will. While I am waiting, yielded and still, have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Whiter than snow, It's time for you to come this morning. These have come saying they received Christ as their Savior. Probably dozen, 13, raise their hand. He's saying, yeah, I receive you, Jesus, but I'm going to keep it secret. I don't want anybody to know it. Uh, Christian, you pray, will you? Now it's time to come. That's right. That's right. Don't be ashamed of Christ. He said, if you're ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed before you, before my Father, which is in heaven. That's serious business. Just come and just, tell, just say, I've received Christ as my Savior. Let us rejoice with you. That's a great decision. Best day of your life. Folks are being dealt with here this morning. Do you want to be in on that? Don't miss out. Make a decision that will change their life forever. Thy sins are forgiven. If you prayed and asked Christ to save you, if you didn't and you want to come, there's time to come this morning. We're dealing with folks right now. Christian, if you're here today, I want you to be praying right now. Ask God to help folks to do what He's bidding them to do.
be seated for a few minutes if you would please just be seated all right we're glad to have Charles is that Roebuck where's Charles is he over there there he is Charles has received Christ as Savior and uh, going to follow the Lord in baptism this morning. Congratulations, Charles. God bless you. Brother Bob, take care of Charles for us. That's great. Wonderful. And then we also have Danny Smith. Where's Danny? Right there is Danny. Danny is six years of age, and he's accepted Christ as his Savior. And he wants to follow the Lord in baptism as well. God bless you, Danny. That's great. You going down? You can go down with them there and help them. That would be great. All right. And then we're glad to have Shauna Howard coming this morning. Shauna's right here. Stand up for us, Shauna. Shauna, you've accepted Christ as your Savior. Congratulations. That's good. Amen. And then we're glad to have Shavana Brown. Shavana's right here. Shavana, God bless Shavana. She's received Christ as her Savior today. That's great. God bless you. And then also, Stacy Hartzell. Stacy, congratulations to you. She also has received Christ as her Savior. God bless you. That's great. Wonderful. All right. And uh, that's good. Well, listen, we're going to get ready to baptize these folks, and uh, we'll go down and get ready for that. Brother Bob will lead you in a song or two. We'll be ready to baptize in just a moment. Uh, you can turn to number 457 in there. We're going to sing a couple stanzas of a couple songs while they're getting ready to baptize. 457, you should have a songbook in front of you there under the seat. Let's sing that first together. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. Atonement for sin and open the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son. Let's go over to 477, 477. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Let's sing that first all together. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. On the last, when he shall come with trumpet sound,
great singing this morning. How about number how about number forty? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Number four zero. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? On that first together. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are you garments? blood of the lamb on that last lay aside the garments that are stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the lamb there's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean oh be washed in the blood of the lamb for you washed in the blood in the soul cleansing blood This is Danny Smith, and Danny, upon a public profession of your faith in Jesus as your Savior, and in obedience to his command, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bearing the likeness of Jesus' death, and raised in the likeness of his resurrection. This is Charles Roebuck, and Charles, upon a public profession of your faith in Christ as your Savior, and in obedience to his command, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bearing the likeness of Jesus' death, and raised in the likeness of his resurrection. God bless you. And the servant said, Master, it has done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. Let's go to number 42. 42. Saved by the blood of the crucified one, now ransomed from sin and a new work begun. Glory, I'm saved. On that first together, saved by the blood of the crucified one, now ransomed from sin and a new work begun. Sing praise.
let's do one more, 246. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. I hope if you're here to, uh, this morning that uh, you've heard something this morning that would help you uh, move on to higher ground. That's what the Christian life's all about. On the upward way, on that first together, I'm pressing on the upward way. Have the servers left to go out to if you're going to help serve you go ahead and go uh, our folks who are in the serving lines did they go you go all right get ready for our that includes your ticket takers carol who takes tickets besides you jan okay you understand Two separate. Don't don't put the our church folks with the other tickets. Make sure you keep them separate. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. Not gonna have any of our folks in the drawing for the free turkeys. Okay. That's just gonna be the visitors. All right. Okay. The fellows are gonna come with the tickets. You let them know how many tickets you need for your children and such. You're, you're here, but you may have three or four children somewhere else. Get enough for your, for your family uh, to have the meal. Because you'll leave here and go get your children and then get in line. You'll have now, listen carefully. When you go out the door, you'll have one line that will go into the fellowship hall, the building right behind us. Okay, there's a line you go through there and you'll sit in there. There's another line that will be right outside to the left of the building. You go outside through that line and go into the tent, and you'll be able to eat there. Okay, so there's two lines. It'll move quickly, and uh, either line doesn't matter. Same thing in both of them. Uh, there's pumpkin pie and rolls already on the table for you, and uh, help yourself to that. You'll go through the line to get all the other things. There's bottled water. There's uh, sweet tea. There's also coffee. Okay? All right. So go ahead and just let them know how many tickets you need, and they'll give it to you. Remember now, you're going to have a two-ticket. Two that you're going to fold and tear, so you give one and keep one. Give one, keep one, okay? All right, go right ahead. And then we'll, and once everybody gets their tickets, we'll have prayer here for the meal, and then we'll let you be dismissed, all right? All right. Bruce, go, go out there, see if they're ready for us yet, and come right back in and tell me, okay? 
Make sure they're ready to feed the army here. Anybody, uh, anybody here, uh, radio listeners, do you listen on 91.5, Words to Encourage? A couple of you here? Good, good, great. Good, thanks for coming. Good to, glad you're here. Five minutes, okay? I'll get everything ready. Are all the uh, Dave Anderson or all or Bill or all the kids under the tent? Okay, they combined all in the one children's church. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. Okay, so they're all out in the tent. Um, how are we going? All right, you have a ticket. See that? Fold it in half where the perforation is, okay? And tear it. Now you have two tickets. I don't care which one. Put one in, keep one. They both have the same number on it, okay? This one is 091144, okay? So then when I will take all the ones we collect, you keep one, I'll pull one out, I'll say, Oh, nine, one, one, four, four. I was like, me! And I win, okay? But mine won't be in there. But uh, that's, that's how it works, okay? So just tear it in half, put one in, give one to the person when you go through the line. Keep this one where you know where it is, all right? And then when we get ready to do the drawing for the turkeys, you'll have that handy uh, to be able to do, okay? Everybody understand that? Um, I'm concerned how... Uh, they're going to get their kids and then come back and get in line. Because we're going to have people going through the line, going into the tent, but we've got to have people get their kids out of the tent first. How many kids are under there? How many people you got under there? 30 to 40. That's, that's first through sixth grade. Let's do this. We're going to pray. And if you have a first through sixth grader, we're going to let you go out and get your children first. Go out the, the double door or the single door. Go down that side. You'll see the serving line. Don't go through the serving line and then get your kids. Go get your kids and then come back and go through the serving line, okay? And then you'll have there's plenty of room, plenty, of, plenty to eat, and that'll work good for us, okay? All right, let's pray together, shall we? Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you, Lord, for each one that's come today. And, Lord, thank you for this food now that uh, so many have helped provide. And thank you for those who took time to prepare it this morning. And, Lord, we pray that you'll bless it to the nourishment of our bodies. And, Lord, we'll bless the conversation over the food as well and help us to enjoy this meal that you provided for us. And be with each one now as they've come this way, and I pray you'll be with them as they travel home. Help, pray, Lord, that they'll come back and visit with us again. And we prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Children, if you have children, I want you to go first, okay? First through six.